for one of our speakers. We won't name any names. When you came in today, in the middle, there was a connection card. We encourage you to grab one of those, fill it out, let us know you're here. Even if you've been here a thousand times, it helps us know who's attending, um, how to reach out to people who might have fallen through the cracks, maybe we haven't seen in a while. And uh, Oh, sorry, I thought someone was talking to me. I thought I missed something, which happens quite frequently. Uh, also on that, we have a prayer card, and so we encourage you to fill out that prayer card. And if you need prayer, or you know someone who needs prayer, or you want to share a praise, you can do that as well. And uh, you can drop those in the offering when it comes around later on in the service. But for right now, I forgot to mention you can do those things online as well. If you're watching online, um, you can also go to our website, fill out a prayer card, do offering, all of that kind of stuff. For right now, I'm going to invite you to stand. We're going to open up with some worship together, invite the Holy Spirit, which is already here in this building. We're going to invite it into ourselves and just allow the Spirit to guide the whole service, every interaction, the message, the worship, all of that. We want to leave here just emanating and radiating the spirit. Amen.
we're going to worship some more here in a little while. But for right now, I'm going to invite Pastor Roland up, who has been playing bass with us, man of many talents. And I was going to tell you you could be seated, but, you know, go ahead. You do you. <laughs> I don't blame you. We're going to move into the highlights, and then that will move into the message. So, Pastor Roland, I'll hand it over to you. All right, amen. Thank you, TJ. Good morning. Good morning. I want to uh, just share just briefly some highlights, and we're going to get right into the message. And if you have a Bible with you here in the worship center, or if you have, by chance, watching, you have a Bible with you, uh, we're going to be in uh, 1 Peter, and we're going to be in the book of Romans. Um, and we'll read, we'll refer to those uh, here this morning. Uh, but before we do that, uh, just some highlights. Um, of course, if you want to fill out that Connect card and you want to put down your contact information, we do a Friday e-newsletter. It goes out electronically. Now, for those who maybe don't get email, what we do is we, we print off this newsletter. We'll put it in an envelope with your name on it at the information table, and you can swing by and grab that, and you can read it. But the top of the Connect card you keep, and on the back are some notes, if you so feel free to do that. But the bottom part's important as well. Uh, if you're a first-time guest, there's a space for you where you can check off you're here as a first-time guest. If you feel courageous enough to put your name down there, we'd love to hear that you're visiting us. Had a guy in the first service all the way from Pennsylvania who uh, was looking for a global Methodist church, and uh, he found us. Uh, he went to the visitor center and says, hey, I need a Globe Methodist Church. Do you have one in Hocking Hills? And Carolyn, who is a member of our church, says, I just happen to have one. <laughs> and so if you just check off, you know, you're a guest, we'll, uh, there's a special place there below that where we will make a donation in your honor. So there's the Chieftain Clothing Ministry. There's the Inspire Shelter, Homeless Shelter. There's Habitat for Humanity. Maybe you're a repeat guest. Maybe you're just one of those regular faithful attenders. You can put your name, and if we got your information, just put same. You don't have to worry about filling all that in every week unless it's changed, okay? So that's the Connect card that you can connect with us with. And, of course, with that, now we're a Global Methodist Church. We have, uh, of course, updated giving information, checks, or any other reason you want to make a check out, make it payable to Hawking Hills Church. If you happen to put Hocking Hills uh, UMC or HHUMC in the pay line item, that's okay, no worries. But uh, we will be continuing to transition, and we encourage you, we really encourage you to go check out the GMC. Uh, the mission of the Global Methodist Church really matches our mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ who worship passionately, love extravagantly, and witness boldly. In our worship, we are desiring to surrender and be fully devoted to one God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our desire is to demonstrate to the world this extravagant love of God and the person of Jesus Christ. Wow, that's a really powerful mission statement. That really excites me, and it matches our mission statement here at our church. So you can go to the www.alleghanywestgmc.org. It's in the information, or there's some brochures at the information table. You can read more about it and we're still updating our logistics as we continue down through the next few weeks we'll be changing some emails and some other things so be abreast of those things um, and from the news from the hive we need to pray for our Grombowski family TJ was up here at Amber and I just want to pause and stop for just a moment uh, for prayer because they're going to be bringing in baby Grombowski into the world here this week right Amber yeah, uh, so it's, it's, she's, she's coming, whether she's ready or not, I think she's coming, and, and I don't know about you, but I've been waiting for this name, I've been saying Baby Grombowski, so I can't wait to see, but I want to stop and pray for TJ and Amber, will you do that with me, wherever you're at, maybe you're watching from home, or you're here, let's just stop, let's bow our heads, let's just pray for them right now. Father God, we have a lot of highlights and there's so many exciting things going on in our church. There's a lot of transitioning that's happening, and 
we think about the transition that's happening with the Grombowski family. We want to place Amber in your loving arms of care with the team. And Lord, we pray for this week. We pray for them. We pray for Amber. Give her strength and help her through this, Lord. And as they bring baby Grombowski into the world, we pray for health and safety and protection. In your name, amen. Okay, well, those are a lot of highlights. There's a lot more other highlights, especially uh, July kind of uh, 17th, starting that Monday. We're going to be looking for some volunteers that can help us move some of these chairs. We're going to be cleaning carpets uh, that week, and so we're going to need some chairs shifted around, so we kind of need some help with that. If you could see Dave Kunkler, he's our maintenance man, or Jerry Swank, he's our uh, trustee building interior leader, and uh, they're going to be correlating and working together on uh, helping us move a lot of these chairs so we can get the carpets cleaned. Um, I can't believe we've actually had these chairs a little over a year now. And it took about a year for them to get here. Remember that whole um, shipment problem there was having? You know, these chairs were who knows where. Finally, they showed up one day. It was amazing. <laughs> so we're grateful that they're here. But we do need to clean the carpets. So consider maybe helping out if you would. Okay, well, today's uh, message, I'm going to try to shorten it because really a lot of the message is going to be shared with, we're introducing you to our nominations team today, and they're going to share what that means, what that ministry is, what it looks like, what they've been working on, and what they want to introduce to you as the body of Christ. And that's really the message today. Uh, so I have in the scripture text, I have the title of the message is A Part to Play. So the text here today, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse, I'm going to start with verse 7, and I'm going to read through verse 10. Peter is uh, teaching the church here. He says, the end of all things is near. Therefore, here's what, here's what we need to keep in mind. We need to be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. How many of us lose sight of prayer when we get things on our mind and when we lose control and we let our lives get so busy that we can't think straight. If we can't think straight, how can we pray right? Right? And that's what Peter says. When he says the end of all things is near, he didn't have in mind necessarily the end times as we are perceiving them today. What he had in mind was he realized that Scripture had been fulfilled and that Jesus was born, he lived, he ministered, he died on the cross, suffered a cruel death, but then on the third day, he rose again. So we have this understanding, Peter says, because of those things, it, we are now in the last times. We are now in a, the final stages, however long that's taking. Right now, it's been a little over 2,000 years. It could be another 2,000, right? But the way things are looking, I'm thinking tomorrow, right? <laughs> I don't know about you, but you know, I'm thinking, that could be any day now, right? So, so what, is, what is the Christian? The Christian should not let the world consume them. I talked about that last Sunday. How can we live honest in a world of irresponsibility? We need to, we need to follow in his footsteps. Clear-minded, and then we need to be, as it says, also not just clear-minded, but self-controlled so that you can pray. That's interesting, isn't it? There's a, a requisite, there's a, a certain place to be putting ourselves in so we can pray. And then he says, above all, verse 8, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. Number 9, verse 9, offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Now, that's really interesting, isn't it? And then verse 10, each one, not some of you, but each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. So that's the first text. And if you sit by and watch others do God's work, you know what's happening? You're missing out on what God has called for you to do. Because we all have a part to play in the progress of bringing God's kingdom values into the world. Now, I'm really fascinated by how many moving parts there are in a watch or a clock. And Charlene and I, a few years back, we were on an anniversary trip, and she scheduled us to visit a clock museum. She knows I kind of like watches and clocks, and I'm fascinated with them. And you go into this clock museum. At first, I'm like, hey, I don't know. That sounds kind of boring. I like watches and clocks, but 
Uh, you know, but when we went in, it was really, really amazing. You first walk into this gift shop, and then you go into the museum itself, and it starts on a timeline, and it goes all the way back to ancient days like sundials. But you would be amazed at some of the creations they made in the early, early ancient days and how they tracked the seconds and the minutes and the hours of the day. And then you go through a timeline and you can see where they take watches apart and you can see their intricate designs and their, uh, and their working. And, you're, and you're, I don't know, I'm just kind of amazed at all of the moving parts that come in a watch or a clock. One day, one young girl came home from school in tears. She'd been given only a small little part in the class play and one of her friends had gotten a leading role. Her mother, once she calmed down, wisely took off her watch, put it in the little girl's hand, and she asked the girl, she said, now, what parts of this watch can you see? The little girl looks at the watch and see the gold casing and the watch band. There's a face that has some numbers and there's, there's two hands. So her mother opens the back of the watch. She shows her all those working parts, the tiny parts to the larger parts, and her mom says, now this watch would be useless without every part in it, even the ones that you can't see. Each of us, whether the part is tiny, we can't see it, or it's large, we all have a part to play in building God's kingdom here on earth. And for those that come together to work it in unity, the picture scripture portrays is a beautiful image of what can be done for God when we all take action in the bigger picture to bring God's will on earth as it is in heaven. And while it would appear that some would have a bigger role to play than others, in God's eyes, we all have a part to play and contributes to the mission. And when someone becomes idle, it restrains the progress. It takes away the beauty of that image of God's people doing God's work. So my question for you today is, are you suffering from a bystander effect? Remember last Sunday, I told you a study was done about how people respond to people in an emergency situation or in need of help. And the more people there are witnessing that emergency, emergency situation, the less likely that person's going to get help. So pray that if you're ever in an emergency situation, that there's not a crowd involved because the crowd's not going to step in <laughs> and save you. It's one person might witness it. You have the best chance. You think about that. That's the bystander effect. I want to talk to you this morning about taking action. Really, that's kind of what Peter's talking about, what Paul talks about in Romans. And first and foremost, what I garner from the scripture in 1 Peter in these verses is we have to step up and take action with a willing heart. But you know what that means? That means we have to open ourselves up to relationships. And we know what that's like, don't we? When we open our hearts up to genuine relationship, we're not just opening ourselves up for the shot at love. We're opening ourselves up to a shot at getting hurt, right? So that's what Peter's saying, though. In order for us to really grasp and understand, we need to, we need to act with a genuine, willing heart. When we're willing to love like Jesus loves, we're going to understand real love requires this investment. We have to invest our time. We have to invest our energies and our passions. And guess what? We have to invest being vulnerable. Because, yeah, the church can hurt you, but it's really not the church that's hurting you. It's people. It's people that ultimately could hurt you. But you have to put yourself out there. And that's what Peter's saying. We have to put ourselves out there. He's reminding us that pressures and persecutions are at every turn. And we're living in a time when Christ's return is close. So we have to be diligent, not idle in our work in the mission of the church. So clear-minded, ready for action. We need to be watchful. We need to know that we're being given this great responsibility, but also it's an awesome opportunity to live in the time we get to live in and be the church at this particular time to be that light on a hill that shines brightly. And so the mantle is being passed on to us. This is why we're here. This is why we're in this place. I believe, truly believe, this is why we're in this very place, in this very time, in this very community. We're ready to take action for the mission of God in the world. And ultimately, it's a rescue mission for the lost. Being idle is kind of like an artist. They observe this beautiful landscape. They'll get out their canvas and their paintbrushes, 
and they'll just sit there and they'll just look, but they won't use their gift to capture that beautiful canvas, that beautiful landscape on that canvas to share with other people. You know what idol is? I want to define it for you. Idol is without any purpose, without any effect, it's pointless. It does nothing. No one in the family of God is pointless. We all, each of us, have a part to play that will bring about the completion of the main point to bring the light of the saving grace of God for salvation into the world. So Peter says, I like to think of it as the oil or the coolant that keeps us working in unity. That is, first of all, Peter says, genuine love for each other. Hospitality towards each other without grumbling. And this helps keeps the parts all working together. You know what? Um, I think it was Josephus, a Jewish historian or, or somebody else, who was reporting about um, Caesar when in the time of Rome when they were persecuting the Christians, they would send out people to, uh, to study these Christians. And Josephus, I think it's him, he, he writes about this reporter who comes back to Caesar and he reports, what were your findings about these Christians? And basically he reports back, he says, they actually like each other. They actually love each other. In other words, there was no fake smile. You ever done that? I'm sure you've done it, right? You've had a, you know this make fake smile, right? You just, oh, that looks so nice. And in your mind, you're like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. It's this fake smile, right? And these reporting, like, these, these, they don't have any fake smiles. They're real. They're genuine. They actually love each other. And that's what Peter's saying. That's what we have to do. He's, so Peter uses the word manifold in the New King James Version. Maybe if you look at your Bible, if you look at the word in the new NIV, I have an NIV up here. It says various. But I really like that word manifold because in the Greek, it means variegated. That's where you get the word various or multicolored. So like a rainbow. So the image here is that when we all are pitching in, when we're all doing our part, we're exercising our gifts, one body, one goal, it becomes a beautiful thing. One Lord, one baptism, one gospel. Just imagine, if you would, maybe capturing this image of this beautiful work on display. What would it look like? I, I kind of imagined hands open. Have you ever uh, watched, can you ever hold somebody's hands when, you're, when you've closed your fingers into a fist? Could you imagine what that would look like in this picture? But see, this is open hands, a beautiful thing when we open our hands and we join hands. It's a beautiful thing. It looks a lot better than this, right? It's a lot better than a closed fist. It's open-handed. That's what it kind of looks like. It, it means that we're connecting together to do more than any of us could do individually. So the second thing is take action by sharing the grace of God. This is where I want to go to the book of Romans. And if you have your Bible, you want to jump over to Romans chapter 12. We're going to look at verse 6 through 8. It says, Romans chapter 12, says, we have different gifts. Praise the Lord. We're different. Could you imagine if we were all the same? If we all looked the same? All said the same thing at the same time? All ate the same food? all dressed the same. Could you imagine what that would look like? I mean, we'd all be in, be, I don't know, I, th I think of uh, that movie um, that has Keanu Reeves in it where they uh, have, um, you know, hello, Mr. Anderson. Yeah, The Matrix, you know, they're all dressed in suits. They all look the same. They got the shades and the suits, you know. Uh, could you imagine if we were all like that? But no, Paul says, in, in the context of Christian ministry, we all have differing gifts according to the grace given us, which means if a man's gift is prophesying, let him do it in proportion to his faith. If it's serving, let him serve. If it's teaching, let him teach. If it's encouraging, let him encourage. If it's contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it's leadership, let him govern diligently. If it's showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. In other words, give it into the hands of the laity and let the laity lead the church. Let the 
laity help and serve. Let the laity feel they are called, which they are. Give the laity that open field to be able to share their gifts of diversity in the spiritual gifts. Diversity in how we share one faith, one baptism, one Lord. That's, that's beautiful, Paul says. It's beautiful, Peter says. So listen, Paul mentions seven of the 19 spiritual gifts, and the Greek word for gift is charisma, and that root word is charis, which means that word grace. So a spiritual gift is really a grace gift by God. It's given to you when you're saved, and it's to be shared with other people. I can guarantee you, if you're saved, you know the Lord as your Savior. He's given you one dominant spiritual gift. You have one dominant spiritual gift. Do you know what it is? There's probably some other gifts that you might have, but there's one dominant one. And you have it. And you can share it. You can use it to share God's grace. Have you ever thought, how can I be a witness for Jesus Christ? Guess what? Here's one way. Share your gift. Share it. So Paul's admonishment, allow these gifts to be used by the family of God for the very purpose to build up all the body of believers. We cannot do it without you. But often the thought is, oh, it won't matter if I don't share. It won't matter if I don't give. It doesn't matter if I don't show up and serve up. But in the big picture, it's like the clock. It does matter. Every small act, every unseen act, whether we see it or not, it does matter in the big picture. It's the big game. And we're being commissioned to bring God's kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. Now, in football, it's often the quarterback. The quarterback will get all the fame or they'll get all the criticism based on the outcome of the game, right? But often, we forget that offensive line in a large way is responsible for how well that quarterback and that offense will perform on that day. So imagine you're the quarterback. You're the quarterback, and you get the play in from the sideline. You run into the huddle, and you share the play, and you break from the huddle, and you go down to the front, and your offensive line turns around and says, we're done. And they run on and run off the field, put their helmets up, and they go in the bleachers to watch. And there you are with the football. But the problem is, on the other side of that football are 12 nasty, big, nasty, angry men who want to do nothing but smash you in the ground as far as they can. How are you going to feel if it's just you against the defense of life? So think, think for a moment. For a lot of churches, that's what's happening. God gives the play from the playbook. We can't execute it because there, there are those who have a part to play, but they've decided to run off and join, and to join the watching in the stands. But that's where the unsaved are. You, want, you weren't meant to be a spectator. You were meant to be a playmaker. Listen, you'll drop everything and spend every dime to go see Taylor Swift or a Reds game, 180,000 people. And then thousands more at a Reds game. But you won't even bat an eye when it comes to the playbook of God's team. Here's what I want to say in closing. A children's Easter play was on the stage of preparation and the director was supervising the kids and they were assigning roles. And so one young boy was offered a speaking part. You know, the director thought, he'd be really good at that. So, so what happened was, he turned it down. He says, I, I don't want a speaking part. I, I want to be the stone guarding the entrance to Jesus' tomb. And she thought this was curious. <laughs> That's like the least part. Nobody ever wants to be the stone in our annual play. And this boy, is, he doesn't want to speak. He just wants to be the stone. Okay, okay, you can be the stone. So the play went off as it usually traditionally does. And when it was over, she went up to the boy and, were you happy with your part? Uh, and she said, well, yeah, I was happy. And so she was curious. Well, why did you want the part nobody else wanted? And with a big smile, he looked at her and said, because letting Jesus out of that tomb felt really good to me. Mm. We know the stone's been rolled away. But here's the thing. Here's what Peter's saying. Have you let Jesus out into your heart? You can do that today, right here, right now. And guess what? You're going to love the part you get to play. I'm going to have Pamela Austin come up. She's going to share with you on behalf of our nominations team. And as she's making her way up, I want to pray with you 
as we transition. Let's pray. Father God, we pray today for the parts that you give us out of your playbook. And we understand that a lot of times that means we have to be our, in our, of ourselves vulnerable. But we pray that, Father God, you would not put on us anything that we could not handle. We know your word says that. We know that, Lord, when we're persecuted, when we're pressured, you're going to see us through. But oftentimes we just neglect you and we forget about you. And we've, we can't spend that time with you and, and we get lost. It's like in a whirlwind. We get caught up in that wave or taken out in that current and it's hard to get back. What we do pray for today, Father God, is we thank you for your grace and your patience with us. And we pray that you'll help us, each of us, to be, have a desire to genuinely ask you into our hearts and to willingly love you because we know that that genuineness comes and we can love others through that and serve. And in this we pray, Lord. Amen. this morning I am so excited that after almost six months of meeting we finally get to come in here and share with all of you what we've been working on I'm um, in this very valuable ministry if I talk fast it's because I'm just excited I apologize for that so what is nominations I've been asked this question quite a bit this past week because we kind of spoke a little bit of it from up here last week we mentioned we'd be coming up um, a lot of people are kind of curious on what we've been doing the nominations team is a ministry team within the church that is tasked with creating and leading an intentional process for leadership development. What does that mean? We're looking for people within the church to serve within different levels of ministry. So that could be the leadership board. It could be level two, what we call level two areas of leadership. So hospitality, outreach ministry, discipleship, working with our children, our youth, or other areas within the church. In simpler terms, what we're doing as a team is we're working together to discover the gifts, talents of members right here, all of you within our church family, and what we want to do is connect you with areas of service within the church. What are we not interested in? We are not interested in just putting a warm body in a seat. So as Pastor Roland just talked about, we are all gifted with special gifts and special talents, things that God put inside of each one of us. When we're walking out in those things, we have more joy in serving. So we're not looking for people just to fill a spot that's vacant. We want to find the right people to fill the spot that's vacant. I'm going to read to you from 1 Corinthians in the 12th chapter, verses 14 to 21. A lot of you are probably very familiar with this scripture. This is from the ESV version. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body. That's all of us, by the way, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor the head to the feet, I have no need of you. In other words, as Pastor Roland just spoke, all of us are called. Every one of us is needed in the body of Christ and in this church. Every role in this church is vitally important, no matter what it is. It's equally important. Just as important, though, is having the right person in the right place during the right time. You all are going to get more joy from serving if you're serving in an area where you feel called to, where you felt, feel led. Sometimes people say, well, it feels more natural to me because they're serving in an area where they're gifted. So what is the overall goal of the nominations team? Our goal is to help you discover what areas of service would be a best fit for you 
or possibly we may even be able to help you recognize gifts that you don't quite realize are there, or maybe you've forgotten that they're there. We may be having a conversation with you, and we're listening to you talk. We hear you say something, and we think, wow, that person would be really great for XYZ ministry. We want to help you with that. We also realize that you are more effective if you're serving within your giftings, and it's also important that it's at the right season, the right time of your life. What we will do is we will work with you. So if you have interest in something, you may be equipped for a certain area of service. We might be able to help you get on the path to that. And then also, it's really important that you are aware that all of us who you're about to meet on the team, um, that you know you can approach us at any time. So some of us go to 9 o'clock, some of us go to the 11 o'clock service. We're here for questions anytime before or after. If you have an idea, you just want to know more about something, feel free to approach us. Um, after the 9 o'clock service this morning, it was so wonderful to have people come up and just ask us questions. People that I hadn't even got to meet yet. I loved it. So who are we? There are seven of us on the team, and of course, Pastor Roland is the leader of our team, and you're about to meet each one of us in a video, so we were all recorded, and TJ put this all together, and it's just kind of an introduction video so you can see who's on the team. We serve for one, two, or three years, so it's a three-year rolling um, service. So there's a couple of us who've agreed to three years we want to serve on the team. Then there's a couple of us who said, I'm not sure about three, but I can commit to two. And then we have a few of us who said, you know, I'll give it at least one year. Once someone rolls off the team, it's really important that we fill their role and we get them back on the team. But the reason we keep it moving like this is we want it to be growing, changing, fluid, you know, new people, new ideas. It keeps the team healthy. We first started meeting in February of 2023. So all of us, there was more than the original seven that's on the team now. He, Pastor Roland prayed over a group of people. We all got letters in the mail. And when I got my letter, I had no idea that it was coming, but we all got letters and he invited us to attend the meeting um, back in the beginning of the year. And in that meeting, he explained to us the role of the nominations team and, and what our responsibilities would be. And then he gave each one of us time to prayerfully consider if this is something that we felt led to do. Once we got down to seven of us committed to serving on this nominations team, we started meeting once a month. And we meet right out here in the cafe. We've been meeting for a couple of hours, but it doesn't just stop there. In between the meetings, we were sometimes tasked with jobs, um, things he wanted us to read, learn, study. We had to communicate with one another. Um, some of the times we would meet in between, maybe just a few of us in the group because we were working on a project or a form or something like that. But regardless, we all understand and we take this job, well, job role very seriously because this is a ministry very important to the growth of the church and we are fully committed to serving on the nominations team, committed to serving our pastor and committed to serving Hocking Hills Church. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to play the video that TJ put together for us. And this is just a great way for you to see who we all are and learn a little bit more about us. So please enjoy the video. Hi, I'm Megan Van Nest, and I've been at this church for a little over a year. I serve as the Achievement Chair in Trail Life. I also serve on nominations. I serve for special recognitions, and I'm also in a small group called The Well. Hi, I am Pamela Austin, and we've been going to this church since February 4th of 2022. We came the very first day that the church was open to the public. I serve, I am the um, small groups leader for The Well. Um, we've been meeting on Sunday nights for, gosh, I don't even know, maybe a year now. Um, not quite. And I also help out sometimes with the services here at church. Um, of course, I'm on this nominations team, which I'm really honored and privileged to be able to do that. And then sometimes you'll find me preaching over at New Streetsville and Shawnee. I like to do that. Um, you'll find that our family volunteers a lot here. We just love being here and, and helping out wherever we can. Good morning or afternoon, my church family. My name is Pat Baum. And I have been a member of Hawking Hills United Methodist Church since our two churches merged a little over 10 years ago. And at this present time, I do a number of things in our church life. I 
sit on the prayer group on Wednesday evening. It meets every Wednesday. I help lead a Monday evening small group. I am also working with the uh, food giveaway and the care of calling teams. And occasionally you'll find me as a greeter on Sunday morning. Hello, I am Jane Bowlby and I've attended Hocking Hills Church since it began in 2013. I serve or am a member of the bell choir, the praise ensemble. I serve in the nursery. I usher, prepare communion. I do some food pickup with my truck and uh, I'm on the nominations committee. Hi, I'm Susan Barber and I've been going to, I've been a member since 2018 at this church. Um, I participate in the, the music part, the bells and the choir, and I uh, bake cookies for the social hour. Hello, I'm Ed Fry, and I've been with Hawkin Hills Church ever since the merger in 2013. That's when I retired and moved to Ohio from New York. I'm your church treasurer, and I'm also in the bell choir and the worship singers. I also usher and Recently, I became a well-trained server of green beans. Good morning, I'm Roy Bontrager, who many of you have known since the church was formed. Ruth and I have been an active part of the church since the early inception 10 years ago. Like may, many of you, we have served diligently and we have seen how God has placed us in this location at this time for a very specific reason. We certainly love you all, the values and the commitments we have all made to be a church that serves real ministry to real people. We both have served in many different ways, using our gifts of invitation and hospitality and listening, facilitating and having meaningful discussion with each of you. The pastors got us involved quite early on in a small group leading and hosting a trail. My soulmate Ruth planned four summer cookouts thanking all the volunteers who served while we were setting up and tearing down at the middle school. Ryan asked us to sing in the choir and Doris Wilson asked us to help with aftercare and Joey Bridges project at the school. Ruth and I have remained committed to the many and sometimes unbelievable challenges that face the church as we move from pneumatic to the promised land. Uh, my spiritual gift is exhortation and mercy. My dominant spiritual gift is shepherding, and depending on which spiritual gift test I take, usually leadership, discernment, and wisdom are kind of all grouped together at the top. The gift of faith. And I am humbled that the Lord has given me that one. And I would be happy to share that with any of you at any time. And I would like to talk to you about any of your gifts that, because God has given each one of us a gift that we are able to share with each other. My spiritual gift is teaching. I think my dominant spiritual gift is helping others because it, it brings me a, a lot of joy and I think God puts me in a lot of places where I can help others. Those people who know me probably are not surprised that my dominant spiritual gift is administration. One thing that I like most about our church is how kind everyone is and welcoming they are. One thing that I love most about our church is the community. I love that we are like a family. We love on one another. And it's one of the things that drew us back because the very first Sunday we were here, everybody just loved on us. So we just never wanted to leave once we came. And that's one thing that I love about our church is that all of our folks together, we all do care and take care of each other and look after each other. And that's exactly what the Lord meant us to do in this world. Some of the things I like about this church is how caring we are and the various musical opportunities that we have. I think the best thing about the church is that we are spirit led and you always hear God's word when you come to church here. And I also love the fact that the congregation, the people in the congregation are genuine and they're friendly and they're willing to do whatever they can for you. And I hope that you continue to come. And what I like most about this church, well, I really appreciate the generosity 
and I really like to be, uh, I really like the music in the church. From the beginning, we witnessed the initial New Start Church merger, reaching out and having two services, selling properties, buying land, capital campaigns, having services in the middle school, the senior center, serving Shawnee and New Streetsville UMC, reaching out and offering online services during COVID, and finally, breaking ground and building. God surely has placed us where he did and opened our eyes to be more focused on the community. Project Safe at Logan Middle School, LifeWise Academy and nearly 200 children. Katie Kudlapur serves on the board. Chasing Closet, where, where Kim Walker's dedication has really made a difference. Food distribution and ministry and two very successful vacation Bible schools. All are here happening because we are obedient, because we have committed to a Bible-based mission. We are seeing new growth in a trail life program that is possibly in new connections that we might see in the Inspire Shelter. Pastor Charlene, her sermon demonstrated the numerous ways we can serve God in ministering to the needs of others. Many hands and many talents will bring hope to real needs in our community. Hi, I'm Pastor Roland and I serve as the lead pastor for the church here. And uh, I've been here for 10 years since I've been appointed as the church started as a merger in 2013. And I serve in a lot of places, of course. I preach, I teach, and I do a lot of leadership development. And uh, I'm really happy to be able to serve. And really my most dominant spiritual gift is uh, proclamation of the gospel. And I'm always excited but very honored whenever the Lord uses me to preach his word in any capacity. Uh, one thing I like the most about this church is the people. And the people are amazing here. And there's a lot of awesome hospitality and welcoming. And so I invite you to come and visit any time or talk with any of us that are on the committee. We'll be happy to speak with you and listen to what you have to share with us as well as what we have to share with you like to welcome you to our church and if you would like to talk to us if you're interested in leadership we would love to talk to you um, I'm on the nominations committee as well and I invite you to speak with me or ask me any questions or uh, direct you to the the places where you can be of service in our church I'd like to welcome you to our church and invite you to talk with me I usually go to the uh, nine o'clock service and I'm uh, also available during the uh, coffee hour or if you want to I'm in my church office Tuesdays Wednesdays Thursdays and Fridays in the afternoons until three o'clock so hope to chat with you sometime so I would like to personally welcome you to our church and I would like to invite you to come and speak to me I'm usually right there in the second row during second service thank you um, we just want to welcome you to our church. We, we, whether it's me or any of the people that you see on this video, we um, would love for you to come talk to us. If you're interested in leadership or you want to know more about spiritual gifts, you can usually find us at one or both of the services. Um, if you're looking for me, you will always find us at the cookie hour and coffee hour for sure. Um, we would love to talk with you. Thank you. I want to welcome you to the church, and I'm glad that you're coming and being here, and I want to invite you to uh, approach any of the members that you saw in this video or if you want to come and talk to me I'd be happy to talk to you about spiritual gifts and leadership interests God bless you thanks will you kindly be a part of this this morning can you join us all in serving and seeing the church grow by taking a few minutes to complete the talents and gifts survey Hi, I'm Megan Van Nest, and I've been at this church for a little over
is interested in um, more of a leadership role, whether that be serving on the leadership board or maybe over you know, one of the other ministries like hospitality or something like that, this doesn't commit you to anything. It just tells us that, hey, I'm interested. I'd like to learn more about it. We encourage you to fill this out, and then we will get in touch with you on that. It's important to note that the leadership board is also going to be three-year terms. So we have people at the end of this year who are rolling off the leadership board. We are going to be looking for candidates who would be interested in filling those spots. And just because you say, I want to do this, doesn't necessarily mean that that's automatically going to happen. But what we're going to do is for those of you that might be really interested in that, we're going to walk you through the process like a discovery process and help you determine, yeah, this is a great fit. It's a great fit for me. It's a great fit for the church. It's a great fit for the board or maybe not now, but maybe down the road. But we won't know unless you let us know. So please, if you don't mind, just fill one of these out. Finally, I think you might have seen popped up on the screen there a QR code. So for those of you that like to use your smartphones for things, this is your chance. If you don't want to come to one of the tables and fill out one of these forms, you just take your phone and take the camera and you point it right up at the QR code. The survey will pop up and then you can go ahead right there in your seats and you can fill that out. Um, let's see, tables. So we have tables here, here at the front, and then we have two tables at the back. Um, everyone on the nominations team except for Susan Barber, Barber is here this morning. So we are gonna spread out at these tables so we can answer any questions that you might have. But what we would really like to do now is just take a little bit of time for you all to come to the tables, get one of these forms and fill it out. Or if you wanna do the QR code, you can sit there in your seat and do it. But if you would go ahead and just join us and help us get these going so that we can start talking to people about the, the interest that you have in serving here at the church. So we're gonna go ahead at the nominations team if you could go ahead and go to your tables, please.
up here and we're going to wrap up the service and uh, probably have our band come back up and uh, worship out. And I'll transition to the bass guitar. We do have another bass guitar player, that's Nolan, but he's on vacation, so see, I'm filling in bass guitar, but I know there's probably another bass guitarist out there or somebody he'd like to learn. We're always, we're always looking to add people to our band. Except for tambourine players, you have to be authorized to bring a tambourine onto the stage. John, don't even think about it. <laughs> um, at this time, we're gonna go ahead and invite the ushers to come down and collect up the offering. So if you've got your connection cards, your prayer cards, your offering, you can drop those in the basket. We're gonna sing one more song together. And of course, during this, the front is continually open. We encourage you all to come down here and worship if you feel so led. And uh, we'll keep worshiping and praying as long as people are up here.
invite you all to pray with me before we leave here today. Father, as we learn about service, what service is, what service means to you, God, what you call us to, I pray that we would have such a conviction in our hearts and our spirits, Lord, to want to serve the people around us, in our church, in our community, in our families, in our workplace, in our school. God, wherever it is that we are, give us that heart that wants to use every single gift, no matter how insignificant we may view it as, we know that you have bestowed these on us for a purpose and for a reason. And so God, let every person in this place today walk away, number one, knowing what those gifts are. God, speak to us. Reveal those things to us. Give those of us affirmation in those. God, maybe you'll put it on my heart to affirm someone today in a gift that I see that they don't even know that they have or they don't even know is a gift. God, we want to serve you every fiber of our being. Let no part of us be wasted. Let no second of our day be wasted. Thank you, Lord, for this church, for the opportunities that you provide, and for this harvest that we get to reap in this community, God, by serving them, by loving them, by sharing your gospel through whatever means necessary. Bless us as we leave here today. God, encourage us. Keep us safe in our travels. And I pray that your spirit would only serve more, would come in more, would fill this place, would fill your people more every single week and every day that the doors of this building are open, God. I pray that this would be a sanctuary and a refuge, a safe place for people to come under your wings, just like Psalm 63 describes, God, the shadow of your wings protect us in those things. I pray for physical health, emotional health, mental health, and spiritual health. Every one of my brothers and sisters in this place today, keep us safe. God, thank you. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. So go find out today what your gift is. If you don't know, ask somebody.